sneezing or coughing and those droplets land on your hands. I mean, these are all reasons. But, I mean, uh, it's, you know, these are, and frankly, good habits to have anyway. Um, so, yeah, that, that, that should be maybe some uh, the rule of thumb if you're touching things that may be potentially contaminated people or surfaces or, or things, then that, that should be a reason to wash. So, like, what I've heard people say that they want to, every moment of the day, clean off their personal laptops or their computers and things of that nature. Are you thinking that that should be done on a regular basis if it's, if it's your home computer or should or that's yeah, more like I you're think, at the I think people should get into the I should think people should get into this routine of, of just, just a regular practice of maybe wiping down uh, your laptop, keyboard, uh, your table, your desk, maybe once or twice uh, a day. But again, there's just no hard and fast rule to guide us here. Um, I think we should just get into this, just a regular practice of doing this. I guarantee you, most people, myself included, don't wipe down all of these surfaces every day. So if we could get into the habit of doing that, I, you know, maybe a good rule of thumb is, uh, in the morning and then maybe uh, as the day goes on and if you have constant you know, people in the house and pets and people going in and out and touching all these services, then maybe again midday, maybe again at the end of the day, people need to just kind of use some, some judgment and tailor to their, you know, their personal circumstances. Now, one of the things which I had not heard of, and I'm like Dean, I'm not exactly going to be rushing to cut off mine, and I know my dad probably isn't going to be cutting off his anytime soon as well, but there have been apparently some recommendations that people need to be thinking about shaving like their beards or cutting down their mustaches or things of that nature, but even like going, I guess, totally clean shaven during this crisis and everything. Is that one of those cases where we people might be going a little bit too far? Because, like I said, I know people like their certain facial styles and certain women like certain kind of things. There might be women that have dreads and things of that nature. So how far is, should people just be concerned about it, these recommendations or should they take them with a grain of salt? Cause like I said, I know Dean's got a beard. I've got a beard and both of us, I don't think we're going to be rushing off to cut them off anytime soon. And I know some of your oh, friends, you, three oh, has a goatee. Oh, I see. You mean how frequently should, should we hold off on going to the, the hairdresser and, and getting all groomed? Like how often should we be doing that or should we be doing that at all? Is that what you're asking? No, no I'm asking like because uh, apparently Dean had heard somewhere that the, one of the recommendations, I guess, up in New Jersey was that uh, maybe the president said it or somebody said it. Dean, it was a, who said it? It was, an article from, it was an article from the CDC that said men should shave their beards. And I'm oh, like, that's because really? that's if you're wearing a mask. Yeah, because uh, but that's really just if you need to be fitted for like an N95 mask. Some men who have excessive facial hair, it can um, interfere with the fitting. But no, that's not a, a rule that applies to to all men. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, that is just for the mask fitting, and if it gets to that point. So no, I would not make that a hard and fast general widespread rule. Well, that's good to know. Uh, and then the other thing is uh, you mentioned some very simple things that people could be doing. I know when you were on Tree Show, you talked about the fact that which they say to do anyway, which is to drink a certain amount of water. I think it's eight cups. And I know very few people that actually do that. I'm guilty of not doing as many cups of water as I should. I imagine Andrea and Brigetta probably don't do as many as they should. I don't know. Dean, do you get eight cups of water a day? Um, but, but I know you mentioned <laughs> nope. that. And somebody had also mentioned the whole concept of, gargling and things and you actually mentioned it on tree show so tell us some of the things that are things that we should be doing should we be drinking eight glasses of water a day should we be gargling once a week i mean like what are some of the yeah so i things? think that last point was the point that last point that i was making on tree show was that's all the things that we can be doing to boost our our, our own natural immune systems and uh yeah i to be honest i think i said six eight glasses there's no hard fast specific recommendation, but that's a good number to have uh, if you can get around that uh, amount. I, I think I'm, I'm also probably underhydrated too. Uh, and by the way, that 68 whatever number includes um, the, uh, the, the liquids from sa uh, uh, vegetables and fruits, which are pretty much 90% water anyway. So if you're getting plenty of fruits and vegetables, that's going to go towards that, that water count. So but, but the staying hydrated being active and eating a good regular balanced meals uh, that are plant-based, lean proteins, um, things like that. Uh, just These are all key things that, again, we should be doing all the time anyway, but especially now when we should really be hunkering down in terms of our own prevention 
um, and our community prevention, and it starts with each individual. And so boosting our natural immune systems is going to be really key. And nutrition, hydration, and physical activity are going to be key in terms of um, uh, minimizing the risk of any type of infection. And um, we were talking to Andrea. Andrea is still on the line. Like I said, she's in the Oklahoma area and everything. They've not had that many cases so far, uh, and they're fortunate in that regard. I want to say that West Virginia, which I mentioned earlier, may be the only state that doesn't have any cases as of yet. That's the last I saw. I don't know if they've ever picked up a case or not. But uh, what advice do you give for people that might not be as concerned uh, because they're not in areas that are having total like crackdowns. I mean, like I said, you're in the New York City area, and I know Dean's in New Jersey, and I was telling him I was shocked when there are whole restaurants and bars that are closing down, and apparently will be closed down for a number of weeks, if not a number of months. So, um, like I said, yeah. there are places that we never thought. I mean, New York has that reputation of the city that never sleeps, and yeah, apparently y'all yeah. will be doing more sleeping so now. My, because so my, res- my response to anyone who says, or who feels that, you know, I, I don't have much to be worried about. This really isn't affecting my neighborhood, my community, my city. Um, just, just, just know that bacteria and viruses, they do not discriminate in terms of uh, borders, in terms of, uh, you know, travel policies. They don't follow those same rules. They will go wherever they want to go, wherever they find a host where they can grow and, and, and proliferate. So, so, look, who, who expected New Rochelle in Westchester, New York, to be like this epicenter uh, in the United States uh, to be, uh, uh, you know, for this viral infection? Uh, but, you know, it just goes to the point that we have no idea where are the next case is going to be. And based on what, the maps, it's, it's obviously in, uh, pretty much in the entire country. So just prepare not just uh, the uh, safe precautions and um, and just just be safe. Follow the CDC and the WHO the, uh, HO guidelines. They have great great um, resources, including uh, great videos. So uh, hope everyone stays uh, stay safe. I, I got to get going, Mark. Oh, yeah, I know you got to go because I know you can only give me a few minutes and everything. Um, one thing that Dean just – I hope you can give me a quick answer, and if you can, I'll understand. But one of the things that Dean was surprised by was this kind of run on – some things made sense, like perishable foods and things of that nature. You mentioned the fact that we need plants and fruits and things of that nature. But I think Dean and others have been surprised, not by the run on the hand sanitizers, but by the run on toilet paper and paper products. Were you surprised by that at all, or is this something can, that can you I expected tell you something, people? Mark? I, can I tell you something? I just came back from the grocery store. I'm actually walking home right now. I went to three different locations. I, so I got my fruits and my vegetables. I got some milk. Um, and I thought, well, let me get a couple of more rolls toilet paper. Luckily, I'm not completely out, but I went to three places, Mark, they're all out. And um, so, yeah, I, I, I just don't understand this toilet paper thing, um, but uh, look what's happening. It's, it's, affecting, it's affecting other people. So, so yeah, uh, my message there is, you know, please just keep whatever amount that you need with you and your family and or your family, um, and don't take a, a three six month supply. Just take enough for uh, you know just wait, I don't know a few days a week. It's hard to say, but just use common sense and common courtesy. We live in a world with other people, and uh, we just gotta share. And you know that's what I think we should be focusing on. I agree. Definitely need to do more sharing and being able to share, and uh, particularly in these hard times. And I've heard people say that this could go as long as till July or August that we might be dealing with this kind of crisis mode and everything. I don't know if you've heard similar figures or if you've heard that it will go even further into the fall, but I've definitely heard some people saying at first it was two, two to three weeks, and now they're talking months. I know that the church that meets out of the Haytown, one of the places that I work at, they canceled service this past Sunday. They're canceling it this coming Sunday, and it sounds like they might be canceling it for several Sundays in the near future. But but, my message well, there as a doctor and a public health advocate is that we just always have to focus on always think worst case scenario. Not, I mean, not in the sense that, not, not to react in terms of, oh my God, everything's going to run out and I have to hoard everything, but rather um, think, look, if, things, if this is going to last four months, and it may very well, then let's start slowly conserving and planning out, or else we're, it's going to create chaos for, you know, a, a large part of the population. So I, I would ask everyone to just use common sense, common courtesy, look after yourself, but also for your neighbors. Uh, thanks so much for having me on, Mark. I really appreciate it. 
Yeah, I appreciate you, Libby. I know you could only give me about 15 minutes, and I appreciate the advice that you were able to give people and also Thanks. clarify some things like that thing with the beard and everything. So definitely, you know, you're always a friend, and I always look forward to having you on the show and everything. Andrea, did you have all those things that you covered? Do you have plenty of water? Do you have uh, the other items, the fruits and the vegetables, or have you not decided to make a store run yet? Uh, yeah, I drink – um, I usually do drink eight, eight ounces, eight glasses of water a day or something like that. But, um, yeah, I've been doing what she said. I mean, I definitely exercise is really important to me. So I've just been going for walks around my neighborhood and I haven't encountered too many people. So I feel like I've still been practicing social distancing, but still trying to think about my own mental health, which is I, I normally work out every day. And so, um, I just got an email earlier that the why is that I work out and is actually closing because obviously there's older people there and you know it just sort of becomes like she was saying a health risk where it's not that it's to keep you know people like me from working out it's that you know if I'm sick and I bring it to the Y then that's just going to get other people sick so it's just better for them not to be open because if people have the opportunity they'll probably still come right Um, Mm -hmm. but yeah no I went to the grocery store I think I have what I need Um, probably when we get off the phone I did place an order for Target pickup that they say is ready so I'm but I'm not going to go in, and I'm just asking to put it in the back of the car and move on. So hopefully there will be no contact. Um, and I will say I do appreciate the people who, obviously, doctors, nurses, healthcare staff, you know, everyone working in that. The health field, obviously, I appreciate them for working. I have a friend who's a pharmacy tech. Like, they're slammed. They're still working. Um, I appreciate these people at Target for my Target pickup. Um, so I know it's probably scary for them, and I do appreciate that they're still kind of willing to sacrifice and do their job. So. Yeah, yeah, and it's, and I've been surprised by some of the things. I know in a conversation with a friend, I don't remember I mentioned it on this podcast yet or not, but I went to pay my uh, rent and everything, and basically my landlord was like, they took the money orders this time, but they were like, they were not going to be taking money orders in the near future because of the whole concerns of passing from hand to hand and germs passing. So it sounds like they're going to be going away from money orders at least for a while, according to the one rental agent that was talking to me and everything, or apartment agent, I should oh. say. And then I know that even some of the fast food restaurants nationally as well as around the country have been going to a drive through only model. So they're they right. having people serve their food right there in the restaurants. You've got to go through the drive through get the food, and keep on running and get, take it back to your house or wherever you're going if you're – fortunate enough to have a job that you're still at work and go to that and everything. But a lot of people are definitely changing their habits and everything. Yeah. I mean, I think, like I said, it's not, I mean, I think they're just trying to do what's best. And obviously if one person gets sick, then they'll probably try to sue them or, you know, blame. And I don't know if you saw the article this weekend about what they're calling in South Korea, um, case number 31. And like this, you know, this woman sort of goes about her regular life, like goes to a buffet, like ends up at some thousand person church service that's when everyone started getting sick so i do think it's sort of worth it to limit our interactions and you know we don't you know we don't have to be distant you know you can still facetime or call people and you know obviously still try to keep in connection or in contact but you know we don't need to be at our friend's house i guess right now because we might be bringing germs to them or vice versa they could give us some so i know starbucks got rid of all their chairs i think like you can't stay in starbucks you can only come pick up your drinks right now so they're definitely shutting it down, too. Yep. Sounds like a lot of people are shutting it down around the country and around the world and everything. So it'll be interesting to see how this plays out over the next several months. And, uh, Brigetta, if you're there still as well, what was some kind of some of your reaction from a laughter standpoint as to some of the things that um, – Lippy was talking about. I mean, she gave some solid advice. Do you have enough water? I mean, definitely you're going to try to laugh and do the other things to maintain your immune system. But do you think? Do you feel you have enough water, or that you've got enough of your supplies that you need for you and yours in your environment where you're at? Yeah, actually, I do, and I recommend it to everybody to uh, get what they need uh, because this is a time when things are changing, and so I. Definitely will go along with um, the recommendations. What I don't necessarily go along with is that this is a panic moment. Uh, It's just a moment where we uh, can uh, breathe and uh, rethink what we have been doing. And, uh, you know, I think the social distancing, which is really a new word, and uh, so we do have physical distance, but... We can reach out to people, the phones still work, and online services are still working. 
And, uh, you know, maybe we 